Hey guys, this is PC Central 102. I figured I'd give you an update on uh, how the PC is doing. Um, especially after the upgrade, as I was watching some of my old videos, as someone commented it about the about the swap. Um, this is an R2 case, and uh, this is an R3 motherboard as well. And uh, so far, my work has paid off, and there's a few things I've changed with it since the last video um, so let's get into that um, so what I've done so far is I've upgraded the the uh, GPU this is an ASUS G NVIDIA GeForce GTX 670 4 gigabyte edition and as you'll see this right here I kinda engineered myself to uh, support the card in the middle because it is kinda uh, drooping down nut causes wear to the board and everything else like that and it bends it and I don't want that so I kind of wrapped um, I had a little school project from a long time ago and it involved wooden cube painted wooden cubes and what I did I just stacked them on to each other glued them and put electrical tape around them and it works like a charm because it's been doing this it's been working like this ever since November and it's done just fine and as you can see here, I do have new RAM modules. I've upgraded to 16 gigs of RAM, and those work like a charm. I've spent, I spent, I don't know, I think it's like $90 back in December on it at Best Buy. Um, this is a good buy. I'm really glad I got it because games like Just Cause 3 that I got for this, it takes up, oh, I don't know, about 10 gigs of system RAM. And when I had 8 gigs, uh, that would have been, would have been real bad. So. I'm glad I have that now. And what I also did, I did get a new hard drive up top. That's a thousand gig WD blue hard drive. And as you can see here, I did get a specified um, SSD holder. It's kind of a pain in the ass to fit it in this this cartridge right here, as it's not made to fit in it. But it worked, and it makes organizing look so much makes ju it just makes everything look so much better. To be honest. I still haven't done anything about all these wires back here, but oh well, they don't really matter. My power supply is still still running great. Probably one of the best investments so far, especially when upgrading to newer stuff like the i7, a uh, bigger graphics card. And one of the best things I could have done was buying a Zeus card. Because if you look under it, the dual fan setup, yeah, like I know a lot of companies do this nowadays, like EVGA, MSI, and um many others do the dual fan setup and as you guys know my last card my gtx 570 hd had a single card and whoo with that with that card overheat to the max because it would go up to like 90 degrees celsius or so which was really bad while gaming and a fan would be it it cause headaches because it's so loud and it whined like no tomorrow um uh yeah and also another thing when it comes to uh graphics cards please please save yourselves and do not buy any kind of card that has a under at least three gigs of ram because that comes in major handy with, with newer games like my 570 had 1.25 gigs of gddr5 ram this has four and i can run every game right now at max settings besides arc arc is just a is just a gpu killer and it's very buggy too so i'm sure that'll change eventually but yeah that's that's that um what i am thinking about getting soon because this case is still running off of all the original equipment from 2010 and so some of the fans are starting to kick the bucket and so i'm probably gonna be getting a new pci fan a new hard drive fan because one of them one of them is just whining to crap and it just and it kind of vibrates the case at some point because uh, I they must be going bad. That's the only thing I can I can theorize because nothing else would be vibrating, not even my GPU because I I've, I've tested each I've tested my GPU separately for that. It's fine. It's definitely not the cause of the problem. My liquid cooling system. I'm getting a different fan for that because that thing is just too damn loud. 
Um, I forgot what kind of fan I'm going to get, but it's going to be, it's going to have a high uh, CFM, if that's what it's called, uh, for airflow. It has like a, around 90 to 100 CFM, because um, I don't want any, I don't want any overheating problems. I want to keep it as it is. I want to keep it nice and cool, and everything's worked like a charm throughout the years that I've had this computer, which... Well, I've actually had this computer for ever since the 49ers went to their last Super Bowl. I'd say that's like 2012 or something like that. Because I remember getting this, getting this PC on that day. So, and uh, as you all know, uh, the one thing I complained about with this swap was the uh, rear I/O cover. Uh, let me show you that quickly. Um, if some of you do not know what I'm talking about, is this thing in the back? As you can see, this one says an R Aurora R3. It's such a pain in the ass to find this, as it has certain board cutouts that you need for uh, for um, the new motherboard. Otherwise, it will not work with an R2 fitting or, an, or a cover because it does not have the right cutouts for it. And uh, after the swap. As I said, uh, this port no longer works because the R3 motherboard does not have the uh, the port for that to connect it. As you can see, with this green wire right there, that is the problem. As to why there is no FireWire no longer. But who uses FireWire anymore? Uh, certainly not me. Um, I actually rarely ever use these USB ports up here. As you can tell, because it's dusty as all hell. Um, these two US, I'm probably going to be switching out this whole top piece one day if I really feel like putting in time and effort for it. Um, it's actually, I haven't really found, um, what I need yet. I just know that to swap that, I have to take out the entire computer or just all the parts anyways. And I have to be able to get this side of the casing off to get to the screws on each side of this to pull it out and then I have to route all the wiring which that's just a day job in itself I don't know if it's really worth doing that because I've got a truck project that I'm working on that's causing headaches lately and it's this does all that I need to do and the only benefit I'd be getting from this is just a USB 3.0 port on the top and I don't know about you guys, but the power button on this, um, that's, well, that's, uh, touchy for me. It, uh, it works when it wants to, basically. So, it'll, I have to press it one or two times to start it up sometimes. And, uh, yeah, it's eventually going to go on me. It's a common problem I've heard of, but, uh, at that point... I'll probably have a different computer to be honest. I'll probably build one of my own. I actually just built a computer for my friend Spencer not too long ago. He paid over $3,000 for all the parts that he got. I threw it all together for him. In a beautiful case. And DDR4, like he got like 32 gigs of DDR4 with the best i7 processor there was. Yeah, he uh, went all out in it. But there is a couple of common things common problems with the R3 right now that I want to show you guys um, so let me start it up one of them has to do with the Windows 10 uh, fan and light problem with the Alienwares and uh, before I do that I want to show you guys this thing right here this USB 3.0 hub uh, does wonders because I have a wire to the back as you can tell um, it has what like six USB 3.0 ports and the bottom two are high voltage for your for your devices and I've never had a better investment it's like a it's a Moco 3 3.0 port or 3.0 hub and it does great I haven't seen anything uh, like it because probably nobody else has a 3.0 hub that I that I know of and also as you can tell I kind of upgraded my uh, 
my environment for uh, if you want to call it an environment whatever um for my pc i got a new keyboard i've got a dual monitor set up all running off those two monitors are obviously running off the 670 um the only thing i didn't use was hdmi i decided to go with a dvid and that's important to me because dvi dual link um i've read up that it, it does better with with uh, the amount of hertz you can use with it and uh, colors that it can produce and i've compared it it's actually i haven't seen much difference with it but it's it's done what i've needed it to do basically and uh on to the actual problem as to why i'm as to why i'm making this video i guess you could say and so let me start this uh beast up and you'll see once it starts up um basically the problem here is that i think a lot of people are having is the uh the computer, the fans will spin up to 100% and then they'll go down instantly. As you can tell, the lights just flickered. Um, I'm going to log that in. And you'll see, fans spun up, lights turned on. Then they'll do it again. They'll turn off, fans will spin up. Got to give it a minute. It does it every time, no matter what. It's actually really annoying. Yep, there they go. I have no idea why it does it. It does. Sometimes it does it more than twice. Sometimes the lights don't even turn on. That that is just lucky because the last startup that I had before I turned it off for this video, the lights didn't turn on at all, and I have. I have to choose for everything to go dark and then turn all the lights back on and it's good to go. But this is an issue of Windows 10 ever since I upgraded to Windows 10 anyways. And um, another issue I'm having is after, um, I don't know, like a month, like every month or so, the Alienware Command Center goes bad and my computer does not stop is it's just completely consistent with running its fans at 100% and then bogging them down, starting them back up along with the lights flickering, it doesn't stop until I reinstall the command center. I do not know why. I don't know why it does that. And the problem, I don't know what the problem is either. I'm guessing it's compatibility issues with Windows 10 as Dell does not doesn't says this program is it supported by Windows 10? So that's a that's an issue. I was told to turn off uh, driver signature enforcement and then install the newest uh, command center and use that and hopefully it will work. But I haven't done that yet. Maybe that's a solution. Maybe you guys can count that as a solution. But uh, I, it's, I don't really care. It doesn't really bother me, but it's still a problem as it's wearing as it's wearing out the fans even more because it's fluctuating its RPMs consistently. I believe that's not, I don't, I wouldn't think that's very good for the fans. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's the video for today, guys. Um, hopefully, maybe this helped with, uh, with your R2s to R3 swaps and your, um, Maybe someone has a solution to why these computers are flickering lights and spinning up fans when I start up. And maybe it's just mine that's specifically just dumb in itself and is doing them. Maybe that's a problem with just my computer. But uh, comment, guys. I'm looking to get uh, feedback. If anyone needs help with anything else or want to have a group chat, maybe talk about solutions or see how... Or how many people have this problem? I'm open to it. I'm open to a good chat. So, because we all got knowledge, and maybe someone has knowledge that I don't know. So, peace out, guys. Have a great day.